Hello there. Welcome to our program of digital slide review and sign out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel. I'm coming to you from OU Health, the health campus of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. And our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, which is jointly sponsored by PATH Presenter and the Digital Pathology Association. I'm pleased to present to you today a very interesting case. Um, it comes from the realm of GI pathology, which, as you know, is one of the areas I see a lot of things in. Um, the patient is a pediatric patient, uh, 13 years old. He's had some abdominal pain and seems to not be eating well, and uh, recently was noted to have an episode of rectal prolapse. Well, that's sort of an unusual constellation of symptoms. Um, and confounding the uh, story here a little bit, however, is the fact that uh, the patient is uh, uh, part of the uh, recent immigrant uh, uh, population that has uh, entered our community. Um, but just thinking about rectal prolapse in pediatric patients, uh, what sorts of things might we be thinking of first? Well, certainly Hirschsprung's disease, aganglionosis, uh, aganglionosis uh, uh, is a possibility, along with uh, anything that's related to chronic constipation with resultant straining. And in a new immigrant who's off their normal diet, that might be a problem. Um, cystic fibrosis uh, can present in this manner. Uh, not clear exactly what the uh, pathogenesis is in that situation. And other neurologic uh, problems that may impact uh, bowel motility can also be associated here. Uh, now, these don't particularly explain the uh, abdominal pain um, and anorexia, although it may be that just the uh, prolapse itself is causing that. Now, additionally, you should always uh, uh, be mindful of the possibility that there is abuse going on um, and anal penetration has weakened, weakened the sphincter and caused this to, uh, to occur. Now, in our particular patient situation, because of the language barrier and other issues uh, it was, and other social issues here, it was difficult to fully sort this out, but not believed to be a problem in that situation. And then other uh, possibilities were uh, a consideration. Well, because of the uh, anorexia and so forth, uh, an endoscopic evaluation was uh, uh, suggested and uh, that occurred. And then the surprise appeared. So uh, something like this was noted in the uh, uh, right colon and cecal uh, ascending colon area. Uh, a little coil-like structure, uh, as you can see here, and maybe a secondary portion of it uh, here, uh, suggesting that there is a uh, roundworm uh, involved. So this was uh, resected, uh, removed endoscopically, and submitted to pathology. Uh, we have one fragment of uh, small bowel mucosa, or excuse me, colonic mucosa that you can see here with a, a little area of uh, maybe attachment. Uh, within the mucosa for this uh, 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 round worm. Uh, and then we have the uh, segments of the worm. Now, this underscores the uh, issue as to processing this sort of a specimen. Sometimes we may be tempted to just do a single cross section uh, or several cross sections of a round worm. And that may give us a, a nice view of uh, some of the internal uh, intestinal structure and so forth. Uh, but we may miss. Uh, uh, one of the key features for that can be very helpful in identification, which would be uh, any evidence of the uh, gravid uterus uh, in a case of this sort. Uh, and in fact, as we uh, look at this uh, particular patient here, uh, I think we can see here that we actually do have um, uh, evidence here of egg-like structures. I think that maybe there's a better section here. Let's uh, come over here into this uh, portion. Um, and I think we'll see here, uh, here more of this, and uh, we can see these structures within the lumen here. And in fact, uh, this is where clinical pathology, parasitology meets anatomic pathology. As we look at these uh, uh, eggs, I think you can identify quite nicely that it's sort of an oval-shaped egg with two uh, opercula, one at each end. Um, and uh, some degree of internal structure with a uh, um, bit of structure around the edges. And you can see varying stages of developmental eggs uh, elsewhere in this uh, gravid uterus. So uh, that uh, makes our diagnosis uh, much easier. We can uh, identify this uh, based on that uh, morphology as uh, 
Trichuria trichuris and uh, uh, make that diagnosis. Well, let's uh, pause and think about how this, uh, what the life cycle is like in this particular uh, infestation and why might this young boy have been exposed? Well, uh, <clears throat> the uh, life cycle looks like this. There's uh, uh, ingestion of the egg, uh, which then hatches out into little larval forms uh, in the small bowel. Uh, and then as they pass into the large bowel and mature, uh, the uh, sexual reproductive stage of this uh, egg uh, can, or these uh, larvae can begin. Um, and they will then produce eggs, which then pass out through the stool uh, into the, in the feces. Um, and uh, depending on uh, what happens to the fecal material from that point, uh, will de determine whether or not uh, this egg has the opportunity for uh, ingestion. But essentially it's a fecal oral uh, life cycle uh, with uh, a sexual reproduction within uh, the large bowel. Now, obviously, if there's good hygiene, uh, this is not, this cycle is interrupted and we don't get this fecal oral contamination. But if a patient is living in an area where there's a utilization of a night soil for fertilizer or other purposes, uh, they may be exposed and uh, contamination, or if there's other causes for uh, poor hygiene. So uh, typically we make this diagnosis on a stool sample rather than a uh, uh, colonic biopsy as in this case. Uh, and this is what the egg looks like in the, the fecal material uh, stained uh, appropriately. Um, not a difficult diagnosis to make. This is quite a characteristic uh, uh, um, roundworm helminthic uh, egg. So treatment of this is also usually quite, quite effective. Uh, there are a couple of agents, uh, mebendazole, uh, albendazole, that uh, just a couple of days of therapy can usually eliminate this. These are relatively inexpensive uh, and have been used in you know, mass, mass treatment such situations to sort of clear out the infestation for a period of time or a population if they're in an endemic area. Uh, ivermectin also has uh, some uh, efficacy in this situation, but in certain geographic areas, particularly if there's the possibility of co-infestation co with loa loa, this is contraindicated because it may produce a very uh, uh, toxic uh, response uh, uh, in that cir circumstance. So uh, that uh, sort of uh, brings us to our final sign-out diagnosis, Trichuris trichuria infestation. Um, in a, a young immigrant, uh, probably acquired uh, in his uh, or home of, uh, country of origin, um, and certainly should be easily treatable with uh, one of those uh, medications over a short course. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining me for this program. If you like this, uh, please uh, hit the like button, of course, and uh, we welcome you to subscribe. Um, we love to receive comments, questions, uh, feedback on the topics you'd like to see or uh, other issues you'd like to have us address uh, in our upcoming programs. Uh, but until next time, thanks so much for joining me.